So from the beginning of his work, I guess you're struck by at least two features of Newton's project. On the one hand, um, a great deal of the early notes on mathematics, especially on um, indivisibles, on the method of indivisibles and on the method of fluxions. So this is work of the mid 1660s um, is what we might call physicalist. That's to say Newton again and again is concerned to show that the fundamental principles of mathematical reasoning refer to objects in the world and that the behavior of objects in the world is not just to be understood mathematically, but is consonant with mathematical analysis. So, for example, uh, here are two examples of this. Um, in early notes on the continuum and on whether um, indivisibles exist, he's which are written in 1664, 1665, he's clearly extremely concerned to see if there's a way of reconciling atomism and mathematical indivisibles. Now, there isn't a necessary relationship between those two notions at all, right? Um, but for Newton, there'd better be. So from rather early on, he's clearly concerned to ground mathematical analysis in the way in which natural philosophical objects behave. On the other hand, when he, from the later 1660s, develops his method of fluxions, as he calls it, that is absolutely, absolutely um, an attempt to bring together the science of motion and the science of analysis. So that for Newton, a good way to develop mathematical analysis is to see the way in which, for example, the motion of lines generates figures or the motion of points generates lines. And we're supposed, it seems to me, on Newton's showing to think of those as something very close to physical motion, to motion in the Aristotelian sense. So there's a very close relationship in Newton between a physics of motion and, say, the method of fluxions. That's not a necessary relationship. He actually wants to engineer it. Um, if you then turn to the way in which the Principia is structured, or at least the completed Principia of 1687 is structured with its three books, two of which are on um, the mathematics of motion and one of which is on the natural philosophy of the cosmos, the reason why um, mathematical analysis captures features in God's creation is, it seems to me, for Newton, partly because the principles of mathematical analysis are the principles of God's creation. So that there's a natural philosophical underpinning for a lot of his mathematical methods, and correspondingly there's a mathematical underpinning for his model of the best way to analyse the motion of bodies in the world. So what might seem to be a paradox, a work in mathematics applied to physics and a physicalist idiom for mathematics, I think for Newton, there's no contradiction there at all. One principle makes sense of the other. Um, the thought might be that Newton is here developing, as he would have no doubt thought, to completion, an intuition uh, which we now typically attribute to Kepler, of God as having created a universe of mathematical order and of God as the architectonic mathematician so that if we could divine the fundamental principles in mathematics that had been used by the creator, we would therefore have completed the task of natural philosophy and cosmology, which is one of the reasons, it seems to me, why the Principia is called the Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy.